Thank you. Behind you. How much of the, your stuff do they make you get rid of? In a chapter 13, nothing. About nothing. an 11. Chapter 11s are mainly for businesses, so that doesn't that doesn't apply. Chapter 7s, you're allowed to keep your home. If you're not keeping your home, you get $4,000 in personal property and another $1,000 in equity in your vehicle. And you also get 401ks, IRAs are protected, annuities are protected, whole life insurance policies are protected. Um, and I think that's... Those that's, things with federal tax protection. Yeah, anything with federal tax protection. But that, and if you don't, if you have more stuff than that in a chapter 13, we call that non-exempt property. And that's one of the things you look at when you're paying back your unsecured creditors. Most people don't have that much non-exempt. They may have a little. And if they do, we can work it out and still make the plan affordable for people. So they get to keep their stuff. You got a business card? I didn't bring my business cards today. That was terrible. My <laughs> office, I know, what kind of attorney am I? Well, but write name, it on it there and I'll yeah, take a picture yeah, of it. Yeah, all right, I'll do that. Sounds good. Thank you. And I come over here three or four times a week, so if you call my office when I'm in court, I always make arrangements to meet with my Orlando clients over here.
like I'm a pretty good bankruptcy attorney, and I'm empathetic because I had to file my own 13. So once you once you've been in financial trouble yourself, you become a lot more empathetic with people. And I I had to do my own stuff. Actually, I had to do two because my first one I screwed up. I mean, I didn't make my payments because I still didn't have enough money. I was a single parent with two kids, and I had a hard time keeping the food on the table. So. You're not a criminal if you can't make the bills. You're not a criminal if you can't pay your mortgage. You're just one of the 99% who can't pay their bills right now or are having a hard time or struggling. So we've had bankruptcy laws since we had the Constitution. It's Article 2, Article 1 court. Um, so it was one of the first two bankruptcy uh, courts that were, that were founded by the Constitution. One was immigration, one was bankruptcy. We were founded by deaths. Our country's not going to get moving again until we hit the bottom. I don't think we're going to hit the bottom until we get mortgages at their fair market value and we can start going up again. People can start building homes again. People can start buying homes again. People want to start working. None of this is going to happen unless we get mortgages and homes and residents down to the fair market value. What we can do is a big first step, and I'm, I'm happy to do it. It's not enough. And I, I'm, you know, I, I'm pretty active in National Association of Consumer Bankruptcy Attorneys. I've gone up there to lobby. I'll go up there and lobby again. I'm really hoping this movement makes that happen. Elizabeth Warren understands that. There's some, there's some other attorneys and other um, people in Congress. I think Barney Frank understands that. But I, I know I watched the Bill Moore show. Barney Frank said Congress, both the Senate and the House, are owned lock, stock, and barrel by the banks. Until that stops, we're not going to get the resolution that we need. So that's why it's so important for everybody to be out here and to be yelling about this and protesting because, I mean, this isn't some crazy liberal idea. We are getting screwed by the banks. And if we don't stand up and say, hey, stop it, we need to fix this and you need to bear at least some of the responsibility for this, we're not asking them to pay all of it. We just want what's fair. So in the meantime, other debtor attorneys like me are working really hard and even, even some creditor attorneys get it and work with us. In the long run, the banks are going to need this too because they're, they're heading for another bailout. It's pretty obvious. The investors, even though um, they got bailed out and they protected themselves, the borrowers aren't getting anything. The investors are starting to sue. The investors have a little more legal clout than we do. And when the investor lawsuits start rolling in, then they're going to need another bailout. And it's up to us to stop that, to, <coughs> to yell and scream and say no more. If, if you're going to get a bailout, then you're going to give us something. We're going to have strings attached to this bailout, or better yet, no more bailouts. But as I said, this is a big first step, and I'm excited about it, and we're doing a really good job in Orlando. That's, that's really amazing. Uh, thank you. And I, I used to do a little bankruptcy law myself. This is why I uh, uh, talked to Carol and how I know her. Um, the, kind of the main thing that she was talking about uh, that's new, and I can't stress this enough, is that they are modifying first mortgages in bankruptcy here in the Orlando Division. That's not part of the bankruptcy code. It's not part of the history of the way bankruptcy works. As she, as she mentioned, normally the, the secure debt, things with liens on them that you can modify in bankruptcy, is limited a bit. You can modify uh, loans on non-resident property that's not your main residence, second mortgages to the extent that they're undersecured, meaning there's not enough value. Um, first mortgages don't generally get modified. We have this HAMP program the Obama administration started. Uh, I think the consensus among practicing professionals is it's a mess. It's not working. It's HAMP's well not intended. working. Uh, you, you send your paperwork in, they ask for it another 23 times, uh, and very often the answer is either no, or they let people start down that road and then decide later, well, it's not working, and we're gonna foreclose anyway. What Carol's talking about is within the bankruptcy system, which is a, a separate body of fe uh, federal law, uh, because there's more leverage there. Uh, the lenders have to, to a certain extent, listen to the debtors, because the federal judges will make them. And in this area, through some a combination of collegial consent and judicial oversight, there's been an agreement reached where you can actually modify those first mortgages, that I think, even if it's a small, a small number, you know, that's, that's happening on a regular basis, that is great. And We're filing about 15 modifications a month, and 
it's huge. It's huge, and 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 as I said, we're we're getting them. I mean, we're we're almost never being turned down. So we're making them work. There's some work. They require some expertise. My partner, who's Catherine Jones, who's young, has no life. <laughs> she lives, sleeps, and eats mortgage modifications, and is always trying to figure out other ways to make them work. But this is a very special county, I mean special area, Orlando Division, and John is right. Between between the creditor's attorneys, the debtor's attorneys, Chapter 13, Standing Trustee Lori Weatherford, our judges, Judge Gentleman, Judge Brisbane, it's a very special area. Everybody has worked together to make this happen. We all would like to do more, but this is a good start. It's an amazing good start, and there's nothing like it in the United States. There's a lot of buzz about it. There may be more about it later. Um, there's been several articles written in the area. I know that Sarasota is writing a, an article. They talked to Catherine about 90 minutes in my office. Um, there was an article written in Brevard. There's been some written in Orlando. So it's starting to get some attention. Um, I, I just We have to educate people and let them know they're out there. Everywhere I go, if I tell people I can help them save their house, they're always excited. They're always interested. I can help them with their mortgage. I mean, who wouldn't want that right now? Unless you've paid for your house, this is a good thing for you. I think we need that federal law, too. I, I think oh, yeah. I mean, this we, was a requirement. If, 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 the, if the banks knew that they, you could take them into bankruptcy court and knock down your first, your first mortgage, their own willingness to modify privately would change drastically. It would be, it would be amazing, would be but it would help your communities. I know that, people. I know when this came up, um, I've forgotten what his name was on the Chicago uh, Stock Exchange, stood up and said, no, we don't want this, Mr. Obama. We don't want to pay for our neighbor's house. Well, guess what? If you don't help, first of all, the banks are paying for the neighbor's house. And if you don't pass this law, you're going to have a foreclosure. So your house prices are going to go down the drain as well. The communities aren't getting paid. Counties are filing bankruptcy. I'm from Birmingham, Alabama. Jefferson County just filed bankruptcy. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. It's going to happen across the country. That's going to be the next wave, is counties are going to have to file because they're not getting any taxes. Municipalities don't have any money to pay any of their employees. They don't have the money to pay their retirement plans. They don't have the money to pay their insurance. So they're going bankrupt. People are having to close libraries. People are down to four or five people in what should be a 20-person fire department. This is having real life effects on the whole community so that even if your house isn't upside down, if, one of, if you're one of the few people who actually have equity in your house, if you don't help get this law passed, you're not gonna have equity in your house. And that's more, if the fire part, if you get a fire, you're not gonna be able to have somebody come and put the fire out. I mean, you're not gonna have police officers to, to police your streets. This is, this is the beginning. I mean, as bad as it is, it can get a whole lot worse and probably will get a whole lot worse if we don't do something pretty drastic to fix it. And, and it's, I say drastic, but it's very simple. Cram down first mortgages, allow the cram down of first mortgages, and two, pass the constitutional amendment that overturns Citizens United and, and says that corporations are not people. And stop the legal bribery of our, of our representatives. We have to stop that. Our founding fathers never, ever, they, people say it's to, to, to stick with the Constitution. Our founding fathers never contemplated the widespread bribery of our, of our government. That's legal. And the Supreme Court has now said it is legal. No, we're not going to live in what you can pay campaigns. So that's those are things that can help. Thank you very much, Carol.